In less than three years, the Nintendo Switch has established itself as one of the most successful and innovative consoles of all time. Not only that, it marked the emergence of amazing third-party titles that had never been on a Nintendo platform before. How cool is it that right now, while you are on the go, you can rock The Witcher 3, Skyrim, Final Fantasy VII, and Turok 2 for some weird ass reason. With all of that fanfare, it's easy for the exclusive titles to get lost in the shuffle. All right, that last part is not true at all. Many Nintendo Switch exclusives have been the biggest games of the past two years and the reason to pick up the system. So today, I'm ranking them. The top 10 Nintendo Switch exclusives so far. And just as a heads up, these have to be on the Nintendo Switch and nothing else. So sorry, Octopath Traveler. And overall, as a heads up, this is a kind of trend that's been happening for the last several years. Several YouTubers are coming together and making these top 10 lists that are shifting all the time. I'm not the biggest fan of these shifts. However, when it does come to the Nintendo Switch, I do want to try my take on this. So with that said, this video might be outdated in just a couple of years. And who knows, whatever appeared just recently on the Nintendo Direct might appear on my list next year. And as always, as a reminder, the opinions shared in this video are mine and mine alone. If you agree, great. If you disagree, also great. But if you get angry and yell in the comments and call people rude names, come on, don't be that dude. Now, let's get started. Number 10. Although I am predominantly known as a hashtag gamer, I'm also a pretty big movie buff, and nothing beats the excitement of a midnight screening. But what's better than a midnight screening? The midnight screening for the biggest movie of the year, Avengers Endgame. It was awesome, and I loved how wild the MCU has become to bring us such an experience. But beyond just being a great film, it made me want to go deeper into the lore and learn more about Marvel's many characters. This tends to happen anytime I see a Marvel film. And this year, here comes Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3, which brings in over 40 characters from the Marvel Universe. Some of these are fan favorites, like Wolverine and the Hulk, but my favorites are some of the characters who were new to me. Miss Marvel made me laugh, and I definitely want to look more into Morbius and the Inhumans. But my favorite character introduced to me wasn't even playable. Lockjaw is a bulldog that can teleport people anywhere in the universe, and he may be one of the best dogs in gaming. Just look at this incredible space pooch. Although the camera isn't perfect, hanging out with your friends and pretending to be superheroes is a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, especially when you have an interdimensional bulldog. Man, what a good boy. Number nine. As I said earlier, a lot of franchises coming to the Switch had never been on a Nintendo console before. This includes some games that are a lot more mature than what some are accustomed to on a Nintendo system. But fear not, you anxious parents out there, Nintendo is still a family company, and nothing's gonna change that. For example, Yoshi's Crafted World. As a general heads up, I know a lot of people do not like this game. I am one of the few that did. But this game is so damn cute. Exploring a world that is completely made out of cardboard and paint and string is delightful. I love the costumes you can unlock. I love the levels getting flipped around. And I especially love this whole experience can be done in co-op very seamlessly. This is a great game if you have a friend, a sibling, or a romantic partner looking to play a game that's new and different for them. Yoshi's Crafted World is sweet, simple, and kind of a great completion experience for all ages. But the true move should have been to port Woolly World. That's really the thing they should have done. Or at the very least, they could have ported that over with it. That would have been huge plays. That's a catchphrase I'm trying out. That would have been huge plays. Huge plays. My new catchphrase. Number eight. Every now and again, Nintendo gets a little loose and allows other studios to play with its Legend of Zelda property often with wildly successful results. Just look at Hyrule Warriors. And yes, and yes, I am very close to it being completed once again for New Game Plus. But on this list, however, is another Zelda crossover that caught my eye. Cadence of Hyrule takes the land of Hyrule and mixes it with the gameplay of Crypt of the Necrodancer. You wander around across a randomly generated world, battling enemies and searching for treasures. However, when enemies are on the screen, you can only move and attack to the rhythm of the music. Even for someone like me who loves rhythm games, the mechanic does take some time getting used to. But if you've ever played Crypt of the Necrodancer, you're basically in there. 
Once you feel the music pulsing through you, the different dungeons and boss encounters become an absolute blast to play. Getting to see the world of Zelda through a new perspective is always appreciated. And now, I want to know what other fun rhythmic adventures I can go into. What about Pokemon or Super Scario? What about Death Metal Kirby? It'd be a huge place, bro. It'd be a huge place. Number seven. One of the things I really love about the Switch is its access to indie titles. The online store has a plethora of options, and there are a ton of great games that I highly recommend checking out. But a game that really stood out to me was Golf Story. Golf Story stars an unnamed protagonist who, after experiencing a flashback where they played golf with their dad, wants to be the best golfer in the world. While this seems like it's a basic sports game, Golf Story is actually an RPG that substitutes classic golf controls for combat. Golf Story is a beautiful combo of Earthbound and Mario Golf, and it is definitely worth checking out. While the golfing controls are tight and a ton of fun, the highlight of Golf Story is the charm. Almost the entire game, NPCs are yelling at you for being a terrible golfer and how you'll never be the champ. These opinions are expressed through delightfully expressive word bubbles that I really want to see more of in the future. There are multiple different types of golf represented here, and each is a ton of fun to play, especially in multiplayer with a friend. Golf Story is the first game released from Sidebar Games, and based to my experience with it, I cannot wait to see what else they bring in the future. Number six. Love it or hate it, the battle royale genre has rocked the gaming space and how society views video games. PUBG, Apex Legend, Games like this continue to roll out update after update to keep everyone hooked, but one game is supreme. One battle royale game is the one that everyone's constantly playing. Tetris 99 came out of nowhere and took the internet by storm, baby. It takes the perfect gameplay of Tetris and puts you up against 98 other fools across the world. And it's hard to take that number one spot. In fact, I've only achieved it a couple of times, but the game never stops being fun because at its core, it's Tetris. What's old is new again. And it's free. Although now you can pay for a single player experience, the battle royale part of this game is free if you have Nintendo Switch Online. And that is all Tetris 99 needs to be in order to remain one of my most frequently visited titles on the Nintendo Switch. Number five. You know, at this point, this game has become a joke on my top 10 lists. I have talked about this game more in the last two years than I am proud of. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle appears on my list today for the fifth time, but that's because this game feels so damn unique. The combo of Mario, Rabbids, and XCOM style gameplay scratched an itch that I never knew I had, and I'm constantly revisiting this game. I have put over 100 hours of gameplay into this game and its DLC. The game oozes charm with exceptional visual polish and music composed by the great Grant Kirkhope, who will never not get a shout out on this channel whenever I talk about this game. That said, I'm not gonna go that much more into this game because I have literally talked about it too many times. But know that it keeps popping up on my lists for a reason. You will never play another game like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, unless they make a sequel. They're probably making a sequel. Number four. Okay. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this one. Hell, I've already have some people in the office already mad at me, but this is my list. I'm gonna be 100% honest. So here we go. Number four is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And before all you freak out, yes, Breath of the Wild was on the Nintendo Wii U and technically isn't an exclusive, but you know what? None of you own a Wii U, let alone bought it on the Wii U, which means that you made it a Nintendo Switch exclusive, which to my point, why did y'all give up on the Wii U? It was a great console, and no matter what you say, I really love it. It takes all the best parts of Skyrim and combines them with The Legend of Zelda. Let me talk. I know, I know you're feeling emotions. It's an absolutely incredible experience. It is completely immersive and breathtaking. Not to mention adding elements of climbing, cooking, and the amazing Zelda world building we all know. What's not to love? I'll tell you what's not to love. Korok seeds. There's just too many of them. And for my completionist mindset, I had to get them all, and I'm working on doing it again on hard mode, so that means I have to do 1,800 Korok seeds. Admittedly, yes, this taints my overall experience, but it doesn't change how incredible this game is as a whole. 
Breath of the Wild has already been lauded as one of the greatest games of all time, and deservedly so. It's just not my number one game. This just shows how impressive the Switch lineup is. There are so many amazing games that one of the best games of all time is at number four. Do you hear that? Ah, uh, yes. It is everyone's arrows and torches coming towards me. If you excuse me, I'm gonna go hide 300 feet below the surface. Number three. Y'all, which one of you all love Mario? Me, I love Mario. Super Mario Maker 2 needs no introduction. It takes all the joy and chaos from the original and doubles it. There are more obstacles, more platforms, more enemies, more themes, more slopes. Well, there weren't slopes before, but you can make slopes now. Not to mention everything that comes with the new Super Mario 3D World aesthetic. Do I wish there were also special themes for games like Super Mario 2 in there? Yes, but hopefully those will come in due time. Until then, the only limit to what you can do now is your own imagination. As much as I love Mario Maker 2 though, there are some glaring problems with it. Lack of good online support, no lobbies or rooms to play with your friends yet, lack of online support, no amiibo support at all whatsoever, and lack of online support. There have been so many cool levels out there that range from loving tributes to all kinds of franchises to the frustratingly hard to the downright hilarious. Super Mario Maker 2 is gonna be giving us all kinds of goodness for many years to come. So on Super Beer Bros, we have this thing where you can submit your own levels to the themes that we come up with. You definitely should join us. It's a lot of fun and the levels will never end. Number two. This choice should not come as a surprise to anyone. Super Smash Bros. is the ultimate crossover video game, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is just that, the ultimate version of what we love. But what is Smash Bros? I hear maybe three, maybe five people asking somewhere out there? Okay, sure, I'll explain it to you. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is your favorite characters to ever grace a Nintendo console, or any console up to this point, to duke it out for fame and glory. Why? It doesn't f***ing matter. And yeah, there's a story mode in this thing, and it's kind of creative, but nothing just beats beating the ever-loving crud out of your friends as Senator Donkey Kong of Arizona. There are so many characters and items and stages and options when it comes to customization that this Smash Brothers has something for everyone, including Banjo-Kazooie! Sorry, if you have a Nintendo Switch, but you don't own this game, who are you? Why? You should have it already. Screw it, I'm giving away a copy. If you don't own a copy of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for your Nintendo Switch, all you have to do right now to win one is type in the comment, huge place. Number one. When the Nintendo 64 was released, it came with a game, a game that set the standard for 3D platformers, a game that changed video games forever. And that game, my friends, was Wave Race 64. Let's go, I'm riding a dolphin, let's go. No, that game was Super Mario 64. And I had been waiting for a game to have the same effect on me that Mario 64 did all those years ago. In the year 2017, that game came out. Super Mario Odyssey is hands down my favorite game on the Nintendo Switch, and it's actually my favorite 3D Mario game of all time. It brings all the type platforming people have come to expect from a 3D Mario game and pairs it with the true joy that comes from becoming enemies with the use of Cappy. This creates new ways to attack enemies, traverse through levels, and collect power moons scattered all throughout the game. The other crazy change comes with the amount of moons. This game eclipses every other Mario game to date as there are 999 moons in the game total. Let me see that one more time. 999 moons. That is staggering. But crazily, it never feels stressful or overwhelming. While the Korok seeds were monotonous and tiring, I was always excited to find every moon in Super Mario Odyssey. This makes the whole game feel undeniably satisfying and easily is my favorite game on the Nintendo Switch. Also, Jump Up Superstar is tight, I love it. 
So those are my favorite exclusive games that I've played on the Nintendo Switch so far. But as you get your arrows ready to shoot me in the chest, let me know what your comments are down below. And oh man, this list is gonna change pretty soon probably because in a few months, we got Luigi's Mansion 3, Link's Awakening's right around the corner, and I haven't even touched Astral Chain yet. There's just too many damn great games on the Nintendo Switch. Hashtag cancel the Switch. Too many good games. I don't want to play them all. That's it. That's all, guys. And I'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye-bye.